Welcome to our school bus conversion tour. We are parked on a beautiful beach in Louisiana, so we thought it was a good time to show you around our school bus. So come on in and we'll show you around. So when you first come in the bus, we have this little cubby that we built. It has a just kind of simple coat rack that we installed and it holds the dog harness, the cat harness, uh, dog towel, wet jackets, kind of anything like that. Keeps it accessible, but also kind of out of the way. Um, the other thing that we uh, made sure we kept kind of part of the bus was this little area here and we turned it into a shoe cubby. Again, it just keeps the shoes kind of out of the way, but they're still really accessible as we are uh, coming in and kicking our shoes off. Um, the school bus originally had kind of an old plastic kind of slanted dashboard and we decided to actually tear that out and kind of put in a custom dashboard. We had some extra wood so it was easy enough for us to take care and do that. This really pretty piece of walnut is actually a banister that came out of um, the house belonged to a couple of our friends and they gave it to us and uh, it fit really perfectly in the space and kind of framed out that new dashboard really well. So we really love that, um, that really piece of walnut there. So the other thing that we did kind of in the front area is the driver's seat. This is actually a seat that came out of Adam's 68 Beetle and he replaced the seats in the car and so we had a couple of these sitting around. So with a few modifications, he was able to put this seat in. It looks nicer and it's way more comfortable and it's still an air seat. So that was pretty, pretty nice for when we're riding around. So the couch we have here, um, this is where I ride when he's driving and our dog will sometimes pretty much just sit right here behind the driver's seat and our cat sits up on this pillow. And this is a really cozy place to hang out and also it makes a really comfortable spot for when we're driving. The back does open so there is storage back here <clears throat> and it locks in place for when we are driving. And then this lifts up and then there's storage under here as well. And also under here is where we keep our solar inverter, which is why there's this um, vent right here, because that just keeps, um, basically just keeps it so that everything has plenty of airflow and ventilation. We also have this toolbox that, this was a toolbox that Adam had at our old house, and he really wanted to find a way to incorporate it into the bus build because it's really convenient. It has all of these really easy drawers that with one flip of the switch, everything locks and stays secure when we're driving. So he basically took the top off of it and built it into this space and it fits really perfectly. And again, it's great because we can just lock the doors when we're driving and we don't have any issues. Um, we have these knobs over here that we repurposed. They're actually from the driver's area where it's just some of those electrical knobs and switches and we kept some and we just thought they were made kind of really cool light switches. So these are really fun. And then we also ended up keeping some of the plastic bluebird lighting that was in the school bus. And we really like these. And to be honest, we kind of wish we had kept more and installed more of them throughout the bus because they make really nice lights. There's new LED bulbs in there. And uh, yeah, so these are really great. If you're doing a school bus conversion, we would totally recommend putting some of those in. The other lights that we put up here, we have a light on either wall and they're both on their own switch. Um, so that basically if you're sitting here and reading or if you're here and Adam's maybe doing some artwork or something like that, you don't have to have both lights on. You can just have the one on that you need. And we chose these particular lights because in a lot of the school bus conversions, um, people put those really beautiful light fixtures, but the bulb is exposed. And we found those to be really harsh in our eyes because when you're in a bus, everything is a little bit more eye level and kind of in your face. And in a traditional home, your um, like sconces and stuff, those are usually up higher. And so you don't notice how bright the bulb is. We notice how bright those bulbs are when we were doing um, shopping for our fixtures. So we got these because the bulb is covered, so it's not blinding you in the face, but the light comes in through the top, the bottom and the sides. So these were really nice lights. We're really happy with them and it still brightens up everything without blinding you. Um, the other thing that we have up here would be this, um, the bookcase that we built. So um, we both are big readers and this is kind of Adam's bookcase and everything stays put really well. Some people kind of do those cabinets up there and we thought about that, but we really needed a uh, bookshelf space. So that's what we ended up doing here. And then we also have these in-wall speakers that they're actually from our old house. 
and we just took them out before we sold the house and were able to put them in here and now our sound system is set up so that if somebody's up here and wants to just have music on or if we want to put something on while we're driving we can actually just turn these speakers on and then there's nothing playing in the rest of the bus so that's really nice for if Adam wants to be up here and have some like meditation music on or if um, we just want to listen to an audiobook or music while we're driving so that's pretty much this whole area we love it up here um, this is Adam's kind of man cave and it's it's a nice space so we'll kind of keep moving backwards Okay, so this is the only area where we actually have any walls in the bus and we decided to actually split up our closet So this is kind of our bathroom and closet area of the bus uh, We have a kind of a his and hers closet set up So when you first come into this area out of the front of the bus, we have Adam's closet There's a top shelf where he can have baskets of some of his smaller clothes We have clothes that hang and then he's got some storage space on this shelf down here Behind the clothes um, is where we have our solar kind of electric panels and things like that. They're really accessible still um, when we need to maintain anything or just check on stuff. And then underneath here is where we actually have the solar batteries kept. And this bottom shelf slides out and it's really easy to access all of that. If you're interested in seeing our solar setup and how we kind of put everything together, we do have a video that Adam put together that's all about our solar setup. So. We'll put a link to that in the description so you can check that out if you're interested in learning more about that part of our bus build. Across from Adam's closet is our composting toilet area. We just have a curtain. We just basically reused the curtain from uh, one of the windows in our house. We chose not to do doors because at the end of the day, you're in 240 square feet. There's really not that much privacy whether you have a door or a curtain and doors tend to, tend to take up a little bit more space. So we really liked this option. We also decided to build our own composting toilet. Uh, we really couldn't justify spending $1,000 on those pre-made ones. So we have a urine diverter that we purchased and we've got a urine jug in the front and then we have a bucket in the back for the solids. We have a vinegar water spray that we use. We spray the urine area out after we've used the bathroom so it's really easy to keep clean. This side lifts up and that's where we keep our peat moss. This side lifts up and that's where we can keep extra storage of like toilet paper and other items. Um, this is also another spot where we reuse some of those fun little knobs from the front electrical panel. So these are our light switches for the bus and that's where we have another one of our Bluebird lights up here. And there is also a composting toilet fan that's kind of always on. It doesn't really use any of our solar energy. So that knob is always out because we always have that fan on. Next to the composting toilet is my closet. It's just a little bit bigger than Adam's, but generally set up the same. I have uh, one top shelf here, my hanging clothes, and then I have baskets on the bottom. Across from the closet is our shower. We do have a full 32 inch by 32 inch shower pan. Um, and we've got those kind of waterproof walls put in. And this is a really great little shower area. We didn't really have to sacrifice much space or height. The window opens if you want to get in a little extra airflow. We also have a skylight here. We have two skylights in the bus. This is one of them. This one is one of the ones, it's the one that opens. So when we take a shower, we just open up that skylight a little bit, lets all the steam out from the shower and it kind of just vents everything really easily. Um, we actually hang our toiletries just in one of these uh, little mesh bags and it keeps things, basically just dries everything out really easily, keeps it up off the floor, out of the way. And the shower is also a really great spot to keep your dog water because when it spills, well, it's already in the shower, so it's easy to clean up. Uh, so we'll kind of move on into the kitchen area and show you the rest of the bus. So the front part of our bus is actually a hardwood floor. We bought finished plywood and then cut them into the plank sizes that we wanted and just installed it that way. It was more affordable, about $80. Uh, than buying those packs of the click together flooring and we really like how it looks We did put a sealant on it so that it can handle all the traffic of people walking on it and the dogs walking on it uh, But anyway, this is another option for you instead of buying those click together floor options This is kind of the back half of the bus here is kind of the living area is kind of what we would refer to it as um, we have a really big pantry uh, we've got baskets up top here. These don't fall down while we're driving. Everything stays put really easily. The second shelf 
Adam actually put these pieces of wood in that make it so it's the perfect width for these mason jars since I like to do a lot of mason jar storage and bulk food when I have the opportunity. We have a third shelf and then on the bottom here is where we have our pet food storage and behind the pet food storage is where the litter box is. So the litter box is out of the way, kind of out of sight, but it's also really easy to access it to clean and, and just do the general cat box maintenance. Next to the pantry, we have our refrigerator. This was an item that we really didn't want to have to sacrifice size for our refrigerator. It's a 10.1. It does fit out the emergency exit door if we ever have to replace it for some reason. But because we eat a lot of vegetables, our rabbits eat vegetables, we didn't want to have to get a mini fridge, which obviously you're really limited on space. And then those chest refrigerator options where you have to dig through and pull everything out to get to that one item that you need. This was what we chose to do. Um, and I think it fits into the space really easily. Across from that area, we have our kitchen sink. This is actually a really nice big sink. People comment on this quite often because we were not interested. Was, I really didn't want to have to deal with one of those tiny RV sinks, the tiny house sinks. And to kind of show that you don't have to give up some of the, well, I don't know, your daily comforts of everyday living to live in a school bus. So we got a really great deal on this sink from a warehouse that was just trying to clear out some of their inventory. And so this was only about $60 and we got the faucet for $20 and it's a really fun shape and uh, makes it so it's really easy for all the cooking and um, doing of dishes. Underneath the sink is where we have our hot water heater and our water filter. Again, it's really accessible for if anything needs to be you know, um, have any maintenance done or the water filters need to get changed. And then it's also kind of extra storage. Um, over here, we have a really big drawer. It's where we pretty much keep all of our dishes. We got rid of that, you know, big multi-person huge dish set that we used to have and just replaced it with Corel. We have four bowls, four plates, and just a you know, couple of miscellaneous cups and mugs. And that's really all that you need for your daily living. And it all fits really well in this drawer along with our pet food bowls. Underneath is where we have our um, pull out garbage and recycle. Again, it's kind of tucked away really easily. I'm pretty adamant about trying to recycle when we're on the road. And this allows me to kind of be able to do that all of the drawers, um, everything that, all of our storage area basically have these little locks of the kind of various, depending on what drawer or cabinet it is. And then the garbage just stays in put with the bungee. So when we're driving, everything can get kind of locked in place and nothing opens and comes flying while we're going around a corner. Above this um, countertop, we have a shelf. It's just where we kind of keep our towel storage. Everything's up out of the way, but really tidy and um, easy to access when we're doing dishes and stuff like that. Uh, coming back here a little bit, we have our dinette area. Adam built this really nice table that actually lifts off and we can put it um, on the back bed if we wanna do um, a movie night or a, a game night or something like that. And then both of these dinette seats actually have uh, three different storage compartments in each one. And so uh, one of them is this little pop open cabinet it's really deep it goes all the way back there so it allows us to store kind of our seltzer waters and uh, extra water bottles the back opens up um, and it provides actually a really nice big storage area this particular one is kind of like my bathroom toiletry area and then the seats open up as well on both sides and has a really big deep compartment for um, storage of items there we chose to actually put this dinette seat here for the particular reason of the fact that it's where the emergency exit door is. And so on a nice day, you can open the door up and have that kind of fresh air and, and that view. But you also have this really big window right here. So it's kind of like dinner with a view every night. Um, so we really like the placement of this and all the storage that it does allow for. And we do have a hanging light um, as well with a little light switch there. Um, it kind of brightens up the area when you're cooking at night. Um, across from the dinette is this other really big counter space. Uh, this particular counter space is probably a little bit bigger than um, some of the other school bus conversions. And that is because we don't have a built-in stove and oven. 
So we have got really big storage area here. This kind of um, little cabinet that kind of a catch all for any kitchen and pet supply stuff. And it just locks uh, really easily. So when we're driving, nothing can come out. And on the bottom here, which is kind of the reason we don't have a stove built in is because we have two bunnies. That's Piper and Sirius Black is over here. So this is the bunny hutch. These guys come out multiple times a day so that they can run around and just be kind of crazy. This is their little cardboard box area. They really like their construction zone on the cardboard boxes. So uh, we keep a little stash of cardboard boxes on the bus for them. And the bunnies liking to run around and play and be crazy. And then our dog being kind of a senior and having sensitive joints. That's one of the reasons why we have the carpet. We have kind of the carpeted area in our bus. The carpet was free. The pad and installation was really inexpensive, but it makes everything a little bit homier and it's just better for our animals. So we went that route with kind of our unique flooring. In the kitchen area, just to mention, we do have this one single burner um, that's a really easy portable burner for we kind of use this most of the time. And we have a Camp Chef oven, which I'll show you in a second, but we have this Max Air fan in the kitchen and this turns on, it has a hood on it. So if it's raining, the rain can't come in, but it has multiple settings. You can have it so that the air is blowing out, blowing in, however you want. And it really creates a nice airflow in here. So that's one of the items we do turn that on whenever we're cooking at night, which brings me back to our Camp Chef oven that we have. Uh, we will put a link in the description for this particular Camp Chef oven. We really like this. It has two burners on top. So if we need a second or third burner while cooking, and then it has this oven that we have found that we can do anything you can do with a regular oven with this. We have the little pizza stone for it. So we can roast our vegetables. We can make our pizzas, uh, baked cookies, bread, anything like that. And it's portable. So we do have it over here, typically on the other side of the um, kitchen counter. And we can actually move this outside on a hot day and cook outside, which is always really nice, or just leave it inside and, and cook indoors with it. And then it's not taking up all that kind of valuable kitchen storage bunny space for us. One of the things we don't have in our bus is a wood stove yet. We are gonna get one. Uh, we just haven't totally landed on our make and model. So for now, what we actually use, and again, we'll put a link to the description in this um, for this particular um, heater, it's a Honeywell heater. And this little guy right here is a great alternative if you don't wanna do the wood stove or for some reason you can't and you have electric hookup, we can use our generator and run this for a little while if we need to as well. But it basically heats up this whole bus really quickly. If it's even 30 degrees outside, we can turn this thing on high for an hour and it's really warm in here. So it's a great alternative if you need one like that or you just wanna have a heater as a backup in your bus. Uh, we'll again put the link for it in our description of this video so that you can check it out yourself. Um, moving back here a little bit more to where Oakley is hanging out. We have two sets of cabinets on this side. We have kind of what is like our office area um, where we just kind of keep the general office supplies and a portable printer. And then on the top, we have this skinny little shelf where we can keep like that pizza stone I was mentioning and some other like you know, bakeware and things like that. And then across from that is where we have our TV and kind of media cabinet. So we have our board games, uh, the equipment that runs the TV and the sound system and everything, our DVD collection, all of that. And then we have our TV, which we sold our old TV and used the profits to buy this one since it was smaller. And it pulls out and we can turn it to the side. I have a tendency to like to put on like a TV show or a movie or something when I'm cooking or doing meal prep. So it's nice I can turn the TV and actually watch something over here. Or when we do our movie nights, uh, we can actually just tilt the TV and go this direction. And then we have a really nice uh, movie night. We have two built-in wall speakers that kind of power the TV. You also have the speakers on the TV as well, of course, but uh, we had these speakers in our old home. So we took them out before we sold the house and put them in here. So it makes movie nights really nice. Um, great, great sound for, for watching. The back of the bus is our bedroom. We have a king size bed. We've always had a king size bed and we didn't want to have to downsize when we moved into the bus. Uh, when you lift this whole platform up, 
there's two water tanks, uh, 46 gallons each, and there's one on either side. And then down the center is kind of extra storage, so all the stuff you don't need to access all the time is under here. So we can just lift this up, fill our water tanks, access the storage, whatever we need to do. And then the very back of the bus is kind of our um, reading and book nook area. Um, the carpet is carried back there. So the carpet installer actually put the pad and the carpet all along that ledge and then brought it down. So that's kind of acts our little headboard. And it's the book nook, but it's also kind of the cat area because she really likes to hang out there. And then I have my bookshelf up there. Um, there's little pieces of wood on either end of the books, kind of adding, acting as um, bookends, but it also keeps the books from uh, moving around when we are driving. And then there is a lip on that shelf. And ab above our bed, um, we do have another skylight. That skylight unfortunately doesn't open. We might end up replacing it with an opening one at some point, but for now that's um, at least allows a lot of light in and it's a little bit nicer than just having those emergency hatches. We also chose in our bus to leave all of the windows. Uh, we didn't replace any of them or take any of them out. We did take them all out, clean them, reseal them, and then we reinstalled all of them. And there are window screens on almost all of the windows now. Adam did make a really great tutorial video on how to make screens for your bus windows. And we'll put a link to that video in the description box so that you can check that out when you're needing to build your screens out. Uh, he made that really great video. And one of the things people do comment on when they come in our bus is just all the light that comes in here. It stays really cool because you can crack the windows let the breeze in, you have all this daylight and it just makes for a really cozy home. Thank you for watching our school bus conversion tour. We really hope you enjoyed seeing around Luna and seeing some of the unique things that we decided to do with our bus build. We're very grateful for having done this bus conversion ourselves. Not only did it allow us to completely design the bus and create it exactly how we wanted it, but it saved us quite a bit of money from having to hire somebody else to do it. Um, if you liked this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you receive notifications when that happens. Again, thank you very much for watching the video and we hope to see you again. Thank you. So we hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Can you contain yourself? Are you ready? I didn't try. <laughs> <laughs>